In this chapter, we are going to cover uh, three different topics. Um, it's going to be just brief slides just to guide you to where to go to and dig more uh, deeper in, if you need to. The first one is just migrating assets. So there are several ways you can migrate assets or dashboards or data sets, data flows between environments. The most recommended one is using change sets. Uh, that will carry all the dependencies and it will just be easier to copy it from one uh, from sandbox to production, for example. Um, there are users, for example, who still use the metadata API. The issue there is if you take the JSON of the dashboards, and again, we will cover this in the advanced uh, chapters and the binding and the JSON, dashboard JSON. Uh, the issue is the IDs of the data sets are hard coded. So if you create it in sandbox, everything is fine except that uh, data set ID. So if you bring that through Metadata API, in the new environment, you will have to manually find and replace the old data set ID with the new data set ID. If you're interested, we have that as part of the binding exercise just to give you a dashboard. So you will see something similar to what I'm talking about right here. Also remember that the user XMD, which is the data set XMD, uh, is something you want to manually download from the sandbox, for example, and then re-upload uh, back to production. Another thing with the metadata API with the dashboard assets or the uh, dashboard XMD or the asset XMD, if you recall one of the diagrams where there's a small uh, XMD dash uh, file associated with the dashboard that contains right now the conditional formatting, that is not accessible th uh, through this directly. Uh, so you want to keep an eye if, again, if you're doing that manually, you might want to bring that uh, XMD file manually, download it, and then uh, push it to the new dashboard. That's why, again, change sets is the one highly recommended. Another topic that comes up quite frequently, and this is in analytics in general, is can I develop in production? So this will depend on the use case, the org, and the setup that the customer, for example, is, is uh, familiar with or the procedures. Because from analytics perspective, if you have the developed assets in a different folder, a different app, a different data flow, then you can pretty much develop right there and just move uh, the assets, the dashboards from one app to another or just make it public when you're ready. Obviously, if you have more procedures and you need into sandbox, again, this is where the chain sets and all of these migration um, requirements or tools uh, are needed. Also back up all JSON files. So right now there is no you know one-click button and everything backs up. Just make it a... a uh, standard operating procedure or best practice to download the data flow files. Um, even you can download some chain sets or, or sorry, the packages and just keep them, you know, that's the worst case scenario. Uh, but definitely you want to keep an eye on the data flows, uh, keep notes, and you can back up again manually. For versioning, you can just create different uh, dashboards uh, or different data flows and just call them different names. And again, you can keep that as a backup. Now, the next topic is encryption. Uh, so encryption is available, encryption at rest. You do need Shield. So if you have Shield, then automatically you have the option to encrypt data sets in uh, Einstein Analytics. They are encrypted at the uh, at rest, the data sets, um, and there is a separate key. So when you have Shield, you have the option to go and create keys to uh, encrypt the data sets and you can manage the key there. Obviously, let's say today I have a key, I encrypted 10 data sets tomorrow and, or during the week I only used five and then I changed the key. So the old key is still there so you can decrypt the old data sets once you hit them once or call, call them and then they will be encrypted with the new uh, key. There's another uh, very hot topic. Uh, it's going to be definitely, again, hot this year too. Uh, the EA SDK, um, we have a few links on these and webinars and being covered uh, extensively. It's a, it's a highly desirable skill set. Uh, it does involve a little bit of knowing or being a Salesforce developer. And this covers things like, I want to have my Salesforce co component, some, uh, some Lightning components, and the Einstein Analytics component and all interacting together. So I click on the dashboard on one filter, that filter you know, emits or triggers an event that another component reads, and so on. All the way even 
uh, it's a little bit still safe harbor, futuristic, but it's, it's not secret that everybody in the field is working on things like talking to Alexa that updates a chart or brings you back a conversational analytics answer, et cetera. So again, SDK is definitely a topic you want to cover. And um, please take a look at this. And we do have a separate SDK uh, document uh, or guide you can take a look at. And if any questions, definitely reach out through the Trailblazer community or the other appropriate channels and let us know.